Hey everybody, it's Drive Home Brain Dump time. Yesterday I uploaded a video talking about my courtroom analogy, the gumball analogy, and a little bit about establishing the burden of proof um, and defining the labels or applying the labels that define the various positions. And very shortly after the video went up, there were people saying, no, 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 you know, that's not the right usage of antitheism, or, or you shouldn't use antitheism that way, or we wish you wouldn't use antitheism that way or Hitchens didn't use anti-theism that way. Um, and I know all that. I mean, if, you, if you go into a search, if you hit up like you know, Wikipedia or a couple dictionaries that include anti-theism, there's a number of different usages. And I'm using, or used yesterday, uh, the term in a very specific philosophical concept context related directly to propositional logic. And I wanted to explain that real quick and also talk about the labels. Theism is, well, let me go back to propositional logic. There's a reason why we make use of propositional logic, because a question can have multiple answers, and so we address each of those answers independently as a single proposition. And so while a god either exists or doesn't, there could be a broader question of which god exists, which could have multiple answers, or more than two possible answers. And so we address the proposition, some God exists. Talked about that yesterday as to why that's the one we address as opposed to no gods exist. It has to do with what, what you can actually demonstrate and where the burden of proof rests. So addressing the proposition, some God exists, theism is the acceptance of that proposition, the belief that a God exists. And atheism is the rejection of that proposition, which is not equivalent to the belief that there are no gods or that no gods exist. It's, I believe X, some God exists, you're a theist. I do not believe X, some God exists, you're an atheist. I believe that no God exists, which is the negation of the proposition or the other possible prong of the dilemma, we need a label for that. I think antitheism is the best label for that proposition, despite its other usage. But I'm happy to find others. I'm okay with weak and strong atheism, hard and soft atheism, where weak and soft atheism is I do not believe gods exist, and hard or strong atheism is I believe no gods exist. There's a little extra baggage there in that, though. But this idea that anti-theism as a term is the position that even if a god exists, we are standing in opposition to that god, to the reverence of that god, to the worship of that god, to the idea that there, there is a god with an authority at all. That is a valuable concept, which I wholeheartedly agree with. I've said many times that if the God of the Bible existed, um, he'd have a lot of explaining to do before I would, you know, give a rat's ass about him. Um, and not only that, but if the Bible's an accurate description of him, then he's, a, you know, a moral monster. This other thing that I that I've mentioned before is that. Um, any god that demands or expects worship or respect is virtually by definition undeserving of that. Um, I'm kind of against the very concept of worship or respect. And so I value that position that Hitchens was talking about with antitheism. But if you look at the literal view of the word, theism is the acceptance of the proposition that a god exists that a god exists. It is belief that a god exists, not belief in a god. It doesn't say anything at all what you should do with that information. It's entirely possible to believe that a god exists and not believe that worship or reverence or respect is what one should offer. Um, theism doesn't include that baggage about what you should do with that belief. And therefore, to put up anti-theism which in the literal sense would be opposition to theism, 
it would most accurately be opposition to the belief that a god exists. And to kind of add in this extra baggage and make it opposition to belief in a god is to create a, uh, a disjunction between the primary term theism and anti-theism. It's, it's a, you're talking about two completely different things. Theism is addressing whether or not a god believe, exists, and if you use that, uh, you know, the Hitchens anti-theism, that's no longer addressing that same proposition. It means something else entirely. It has to do more with what do you think about a god were it to exist. And so that's why I said that I reject that particular usage. Um, it's, it's about me being very particular about labeling terms with propositional logic. That said, I fully admit we have a problem with terminology. We've always had a problem with terminology. And that's why I get emails on almost a daily basis with people saying, oh, you're an atheist. Well, how did you prove that a God doesn't exist? How can you be absolutely certain? Don't you have to know everything? And um, the funny thing about that is that even if I were, at the time, we were talking about anti-theism instead of theism, or strong atheism instead of atheism, none of those require absolute certainty. Absolute certainty is a big fat red herring that doesn't get us anywhere. We don't base our beliefs on a requirement of absolute certainty. We don't even base knowledge on a requirement of absolute certainty, and knowledge is a subset of belief. I've used very particular terms in the past and defined them that belief is the acceptance of a proposition is true. Knowledge, I'm not a fan of the justified true belief uh, definition, but it is certainly a subset of belief. And I have a working definition of knowledge that I use that I think fits the colloquial usage, which is that knowledge, you can hold beliefs to varying degrees of certainty. Absolute certainty is not required. And I, when I talk about knowledge, I'm talking about belief held to such a high degree of certainty that it would be worldview altering to discover that it was false. That's a bit clunky, but justified true belief as a definition has its own problems. So somehow I went from the labels that we use to uh, a short bit on epistemology in those terms. I, for the people who were frustrated that I used anti-theism, hopefully at least now you can understand why I used that particular label in the context that I'm speaking. And for the people who have a preference for a hard and soft atheism or weak, strong atheism, um, I have similar issues with those labels, but I don't know that they're better or worse than anti-theism. Um, and I've seen dystheism, maltheism, uh, igtheism, uh, all sorts of other possible labels. But these are big concepts that, that go beyond where we need to primarily focus, which is on the proposition that a god exists. Uh, it, it, it's kind of a bit of a distraction to start talking about the alternate proposition, that no gods exist. And so, I don't do it apart from clarifications like this. But I love the topic, and uh, hopefully the people who were, no, 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 he said anti-theism, and he used it in a way that's wrong, will kind of understand that uh, it could go look it up, dig around, there's multiple usages, and at least I hope that they understand why I used it the way I did, and that I'm open to better labels I'm um, just not convinced that we have any better labels at this point. Anyway, if you're able to donate to Camp Quest, there's a link down there. And if you're not, I understand it. I'm just having fun, having conversations with people. Talk to you later.